Would you rather send your child to school or to go learn a skill? At what point do parents, guardians, and others really discover uh, children who have very special gifts? Is there a paradigm shift in how children are schooled or taught how to live uh, for the future? I want to take a look at this this morning as we ask the question on talent management and career guidance in schools. Is there been a paradigm shift? Is there something happening that many parents or teachers or guardians uh, are not really paying attention to? Is it peculiar to Nigeria alone? I want to find answers to this question this morning. I will be speaking with, a, uh, in fact, uh, a, a youth motivator. I used to call him that. Kingsley Obam Ebulem is very much in this. He's an author as well as uh, very, uh, very, very good with young people. <laughs> Kingsley, nice to have you on the show today. Thank you so much. You should have been here a long time ago. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you know, first of all, there's always a first time. So this is the first time. Here so let's time. see. Let's see how it goes. I hope we'll be doing this more. Let's talk about the young people. Uh, mm -hmm. The reason that Steve Abra Television has uh, really dedicated, is dedicating our entire life to mm -hmm. youth development is because as an organization, we've been able to identify the fact that a nation that ignores its youth does yeah. so at its own peril. Mm -hmm. We want to not only little way contribute. We have an upcoming uh, uh, summit yeah. that centers around education. That's and we want to take the classroom education first and come to this one, mm -hmm. which is why we're asking the question if there is a paradigm shift that many people are not very alive a to world, yeah. in our society. So tell us, tell us, what's going on in the education sector? And talking about <laughs> summits, yes. that makes it tough for us. We are both Absolutely. organizing a summit too. Uh, but the difference between what I'm doing and what you guys are doing is uh, basically redefining what intelligence is. Yeah. And if you ask me, in a nutshell, talent is intelligence. Intelligence is expression of talent. And it's as simple as that. You just, um, we just ended the, the, the Women's World Cup yesterday. Yesterday, it yes. was... Uh... England lost to Spain. Now, we were watching football, isn't it? But what you were seeing were exhibition of talent, right? Yes. Sir. But it's also exhibition of intelligence. And what do I call that? It is athletic or... Um, um, and the world championship is also going on right yes. now. So, so the these are all athletic intelligence. It is a form of intelligence that requires, now listen, using the brain yeah. to coordinate that round leather ball with your legs. Football is not played with the legs. Hmm. You kick football with your legs, but you play football with your brain. Your brain. So if you're not intelligent, you can't play football. Mm -hmm. So we underestimate how intelligence is deployed. We all underestimate and trivialize the level of intelligence that is required to get things done. And that is why somebody will rather um, appreciate somebody who has a degree in mechanical engineering over somebody who can design a beautiful clothes and somebody puts that clothes on and the person is looking so elegant as if they came from heaven. So it is the same intelligence that the guy who made that close and the mechanical engineer are displaying. But where we have a problem, and which is, which is what I think should be the trust of this conversation, yeah. is how come we play down on one intelligence mm -hmm. against another intelligence? Which is like, how come do we celebrate one talent at the expense of another talent? That is what got us to this point, where somebody is in the classroom one speaks good English. Another can solve mathematical equations so well. so well. Another can play football so well. And one can dance so well. Another can cook excellently. Another can, you know, beat the drum fantastically. So you push all the other guys into the dustbin and say, you who can speak English, you who can solve maths very well, please come in. Okay. That's how we got to this point. So the paradigm shift that we are trying to uh, uh, promote and uh, see how we can engender is that paradigm shift that says everybody, the child who can't speak English very well, 
but can make clothes for Sheon Davis. Yeah. The boy who can solve mathematical equation, but when you give him the drums and the drumsticks, he can produce amazing beats. The boy who doesn't understand what biology is all about, but when he gets into the kitchen, he can make fantastic meals, even better than Hilda Bassi. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. <laughs> did you ever taste her food? Yeah, anyway, I did you know, Just imagine, for, yeah. for want of speaking, okay. you know. So that is where we are going to, such that that boy doesn't feel let down. He doesn't feel that he is being discounted because he is not good at maths. That's one. Two, also, the person who teaches maths, the person who teaches English, the person who teaches biology, the person who teaches agri science, can now see that I'm not just teaching a subject. Rather, what I'm teaching is a life skill. Hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you understand that I am teaching a life skill, whether it is maths, whether it is English, whether it is biology, whether it is chemistry, whether it is agri-science, French. It is a life skill because you should be able, or rather, if you are able to make the connection. And what is this connection? The life application connection between the classroom, the subject, and the exhibition of the subject as an intelligence that somebody can use to earn a living and become a better member of the In society. essence, because at some point when the discussion began and I was watching over, I remember there is something that seems to be moving fast across Africa. Mm. Uh, some would ask, is, this, is, is it confusing or is it clearly stated that this is in contention with the classroom education? Yes. That people should rather just ignore classroom education and just push their children towards skill acquisition or both of them? Because some would say, if you don't go through the classroom uh, education, how do you get to, you know, now, let, let me relate? You. How do you speak? How do you get other skills that you need? Even when you want to really uh, face um, your skills and earn a living from it. Let me, let me help you put this in context. Education. Education happens not only in the classroom. You go to school to get an education, right? But what is going on here? Shame you are being educated, isn't it? I am being educated. The guy who is watching at home is being educated. So the problem we have is not properly defining or drawing a line between school or the education that happens in school and the education that happens outside of school. Okay. Most people who are doing amazing stuff actually were not educated in school. Mm. It's arguable, but I can reel out. <laughs> you, for instance, where did you learn this? Even if you studied MassCom, I studied MassCom. I did. There was no studio anywhere. I was lucky to have one. Good. <laughs> now, a lot of mass com graduates come out of school and they can't edit anything. anything. They can't write a script. They can't read the news. They can't report on the spot or uh, um, um, record it. Some can't even interview. So if you graduate as a mass com, uh, if, you, if you studied mass com and now you've graduated as, as a graduate of mass com, and I can't hire you straight from the classroom. Straight up to edit my news, to write my news, to cast my news. Sorry. Is it more about certification than expertise or talent or what? First of all, it is about there? recognizing now, listen. Okay. It's about recognizing that the person who is sitting in your class is a talent. And okay. when that talent is misplaced and mismatched, there's a problem. Misplaced and mismatched. I'm going to Please say, I'm, I'm going to explain. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, the boy who has no business studying Mascom goes to study Mascom and he's out and he's stranded. He can't read. I'm sorry, he can't read the news. That's not his thing. He can't write the news. That's not his thing. He doesn't like the camera. That's not his thing. Besides, who, even, who teaches camera? 
<laughs> you know, who teaches you how to handle camera in, in, in mass communication school? I can't remember any. The guy who taught me documentary production has never produced a documentary. And he's a professor today. I'm, I'm going to leave that. Uh, okay. Yes, let's leave it. No table shaking. Now, you come out of school, you can't solve a problem based on what you studied. Yeah. That's the problem. Now, what you studied is not what you wanted to study. In the first place. Yes. Okay. So what you want to study, you don't have the prerequisite for it. Or it doesn't even exist anywhere in Nigeria. Then the second thing is, what you want to study. Is this something you should go to the university to study if you really want to do it right? For instance, hmm. I want to learn how to run the best five-star restaurant in Lagos. I am 18. Where should I go to? <laughs> university of Lagos? Of course, no. University of Ibadan? Hell no. Yabatek? Definitely not. But they have courses that offer such opportunities, don't they? No. No. I want to run a five-star hotel. It is not Unilag I should be going to. I should go to the guy who is running a five-star hotel currently and has a training system for replicating after his own kind. The person that has a training, a, a training facility for such yes. could be easy to go meet. But most people that run such don't own them. Fantastic. And that's the that's So point. how do we create a system where... Hilda Bassi, for instance, I'm interested in becoming a chef. Rather than me going to Unilag and spending four years studying political science that I have no business studying, why can't I be matched with Hilda Bassi, for instance, and let her train me and teach me? I asked you yes. the place of society and the stigma that those who don't... <laughs> so I'm sure now, you've heard that before. I love it. So yes. before you land, the question is, where has this stigma taken us? We are not productive. I was asking you the other day, um, was it yesterday or so, and I said, I want to, I want to become like um, Mofachi, right? Okay. I want to become the next Moody. Okay. I want to become the next Diolasego, right? And I have just been admitted to study geology in... Well, there's fashion design in schools. And that's the point. <laughs> there are schools that really, uh, name that them. really name uh, them. offer... Name them. I know that Yabatek does. I know other schools. I've left schools since one million years Good. ago. How that's... many Diolasegos, how many... Moody's, how many Mofechis, how many... Um, it's okay, the, the brands are, you know... Yes. How many of them went to Unilag to study fashion design? It's a gift. Some of them it's did talent. Have, some of them actually went to learn the skills abroad. They will tell you now, that they... They went abroad of, yes. because they realized this is what I'm... I'm passionate about this. I've got the talent for it. So they didn't waste their time trying to study geology. So school is still relevant in this case. I started by defining what school is. Rather than use the word school, the word I prefer is education. Okay. Education. And if that is the big deal, and I said, Sheung, every day you are being educated. You may not be certificated in the area of your education, but you've got the skill. Can okay. you solve a problem with that skill? That's the question. If the answer is yes, who gives Hmm? Yeah, okay. So About, to speak, or now to go. Yes. So to speak. Now, I'm going to give you a pathetic statistics that would help you re look at this stigma and see should we continue in this stigma or should we actually be serious mm -hmm. about this paradigm shift? Now, the current U the, the JAM uh, UTME result that has been released, you know, about 1.8 million wrote the, <laughs> wrote the exam. Or rather, registered, yes. Um, about 1.6 wrote the exam. 1.8 registered for it, right? Now, about 1.6 results were released. We have 170 universities in Nigeria, okay? 600,000 admissions have been given by JAM. Our universities can only admit 420,000. 
So, I should ask you. So, I should ask you. <laughs> so, you are going to have all manner of people writing the next jam, feeding jam. Not because they didn't pass in the first instance. The word pass is relative. What is pass? The question is, what do you want to do in the university? Hmm. Do you, should you be going to the university? Should the university be your definition or our definition of somebody who is educated or somebody who went to school, so to speak? You get what I'm saying? So I have a dude who, he makes fantastic sofas like this. Okay. Guess what? He wants to study uh, banking and finance. Okay. And he's been busted now. He can't be admitted. This is his third time. Three years. Yes. What is his problem? He says, just in case he can no longer make sofas, he mm. wants to have something to fall back on. Like a bank. I said, okay. so you want to fall back on a banking and finance degree that cannot earn you, a, that can't give you a job. Because mm. you would have ended up studying banking and finance. Are you going to work in a bank with that certificate? Hmm. Now, you make so far so well. Why don't you ask for a place where you can learn how to improve on your so far making skill, take it a notch higher, and then learn how to run an effective furniture business, move it to the point where you can now train furniture makers who can take, over, take after you. Like training the trainers. So the guy is staring at me, and I'm saying, you may not be, you may not be admitted. And if you're not admitted, what are your next options? Okay. This young chap is 24. On a normal day, he ought to have graduated, isn't it? Yes. But he earns a living making sofas. So the question is, how did he get to the point where he's about to jettison an exceptional skill that is feeding him, feeding so many people, creating jobs, getting people fulfilled? He wants to put that... And go to school. No, right. no, 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 no. <laughs> it's not good to school. Okay. He wants to go and get a degree. A degree. Let's be very specific. A, a if he wants to go to school, there are so many schools he could go to. First of all, he could up his game. His English is not good. He may okay. want to teach himself how to speak better so you can relate with customers. He can go to a finishing school and learn how to dress properly so that you can deal with an upscale market. i like to clarify but this. But not going to study banking and finance Okay. Let's say that's a mismatch, just as you said, but that, just, I want to resound this, that for what he wants to do, some would argue with you that there are schools that offer such courses. I just want, just for clarity, okay? A school for where the, you can, a university where you can learn how to make sofa. Okay, wait. No, no, <laughs> but I know that they can teach you how to do carpentry and also like technical colleges and all mm. of that that offer mm. such. Mm. Uh, are those ones in the, in the... Uh, are they degree offering, Abby? Is that what you're asking? No, not just degree of it. Are they okay. relevant in the scheme of this shift <laughs> that many people are saying they, then? They should be relevant if we identify and then organize them. Create a system okay. where yeah. you have companies like, um, um, you know. There's you can't mention names. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so you yeah. have so many furniture companies in this country. We have a lot of furniture making outfits. What stops the government? From saying, okay, guys, you don't even have the right manpower. When you want to recruit, the average furniture company, when they want to recruit furniture makers, it's a big deal. So mm. how about having this collaboration that makes it such that if you're done with secondary school, you can easily move into a furniture making school where you learn how to make furniture if you're passionate about it. That's where the starting point is. Okay. Rather than you going to study philosophy, microbiology, political science, and you are out, you're not political science, you are not microbiology, geology. you are not geology, nothing. The next thing, you start selling human hair, you start selling Brazilian hair, ah. you start selling um, but risky kind of creams. That is a waste okay. of time now. and human resources. Okay, now, uh, point made, I want to believe clearly so, my viewer, but where does government come in? Where yeah. does the private sector come in? Where do the parents come in? Where Good. do the society stand Fantastic. in the scheme of things? Yeah. Fantastic. I love the way you've delineated it. So we're going to take it one by one. Role. 
government, first of all, need to realize not everybody should go to the university. That's that, that point, you can't overemphasize it. When you realize that not everybody should or can go to the university, what are the alternatives? The alternatives are technical colleges or entrepreneurial internship. What do I mean by that? Simple. I'm passionate about wigs, hair making, styling. I don't need to study political science. I don't need to study microbiology. I don't need to study you know, pharmacy to realize that this can earn me a living. I've done enough schooling. I've done SS3 and I've graduated. I'm out. This is my passion. If I go to the university, I'm going to spend four years. When I'm out, I'll be fixated on that degree that I won't want to go and start doing my hair making. So how do I transition from SS3 straight into a world-class school where I can learn how to make women beautiful? That's it for me. If you want to give me a degree to make me feel cool, so be it. But let me have that first. Good. So that's what now... We, we, we've applied for a bill to, to, uh, uh, to set up or give license to 63 more universities, for God's sake. Mm -mm. The more you have those universities, the more unemployable we become. It's about skill, my dear. It's yeah. about skill. So you know, right. If somebody comes in here now and the person says, I can read the news, what would be your first response? Audition. Listen to the person, see if the person has it, audition the person. That's so all. Yes, and then, audience. hold on. And the guy is done reading the news and you're like, wow, that's a fantastic news reader. And the guy says, and you ask, where did you study? He said, I just left secondary school. You just did what? No, that's not what we see them. So, what are we talking about? If this guy comes on board, it's okay, you know what? You are 20, right? Okay, let's do this. We're going to keep you here for six months. We'll take you through all the mails and stuff and see your real strength. Yeah. And then we unleash you. That's all. That guy may not be able to gain admission to study mass comm anywhere. But he's got a gift. He's got a talent. He's got an intelligence that she needs now. A news reader who is fantastic, good looking, who can look into the camera and drop the news. That's his gift. And he's been holding it. And he's 20. And he pops up and you need him. So what are you waiting for? Okay. Why don't you pick this kid, turn him to what you want, and unleash him. And let him go and look for a degree whenever he wants to get it, if he really needs it. Now, you said something about parents. Yes. I'm going to quickly drop that. Okay. Now, parents need to realize that if your child has a talent... If you insist on that child going to the university, first of all, in this country, jam is your nemesis. <laughs> so jam is one guy who would move somebody who wants to study, <laughs> who wants to become change a doctor. Change destiny. <laughs> so somebody say, <laughs> jam changes your destiny. <laughs> and so then the lawyer is put me, now, okay? That's what a said. lawyer is correct. Somebody who wants to be a lawyer. Is now studying Arabic. I've never heard that before. Oh, there's so this many of them. Sweet. If you do what I do, you know, you'll okay. meet all of them. Somebody in the classroom wanted to become a doctor. He couldn't pass the, the cutoff. He ended up studying biology education. He is now a biology teacher and he is sick, frustrated, wounded, and he's passing this on to children in his class. And that's the point. Someone who wants to be a medical doctor, yes. talented, cares for people, has yes. answers to yes. animals, anatomy, human mm -hmm. anatomy, and everything. By nature, just it should be bright, isn't it? Wait, do you expect such person not to go to a medical school? He should just be uh, should marked out with a doctor yes. and so certified as a medical the, doctor. The, the, the question is, how did you make the decision? How did you decide that you want to become a doctor? There should be a process. Who told you? you would, you should, you can. You get it? Yeah, that we, process we, is we have, we have which is go. where yes. the issue with the guardians and counseling thing yes, that I talked yes, about. Yes, so seconds, there is no career advisory going on. So people wake up, the other day some children, they met me, they said, they, no, I, I asked, I said, how many of you want to become lawyers? They really, I said, mm -hmm. okay, come and see me. 
So I said, why do you want to become a lawyer? I said, because my father said I can argue very well. <laughs> so my father said I can talk so well. My mommy said I can debate. So I said, lawyers debate? Is that what lawyers do? So I told them what lawyers do. I started by saying, lawyers research. First and foremost. Lawyers investigate. They what? said, ah, that's not what they told us. That was the end of so to the speak. lawyer. Right? <laughs> but I don't know, maybe there are exceptions to the rule. This is not the last time we'll be speaking with you. We'll bring you in on uh, time after time to so really see how we can you maximize <laughs> you right now. Yes. That, that's good to know. To see how we can help the young people to maximize the potentials and release it to, you can to the nation. So that count on the that. country can grow even yes. you know, we you know more. We need to begin to. There are a lot of kids now who are frustrated studying courses they have no business studying. Doing. We've been speaking with Kingsley Obamable, and he's a youth, you know, in fact, motivator and all of that. Uh, a teen's taking, life coach also. And, and, a, and actually a teen life coach, that's what he does all the time. We well, thank you very much for being part of the show today. Thank you so much Can't for having me. Can't wait to have you again. It's all my right. pleasure. So the question is, it, uh, have you had something like that on your mind for some time? You need some you know, clarity here and there. What are your children up to? Your words? What are they up to do? Let's take care of them. Let's listen to them. Let's watch them. Let's help them key into what the future really has for them.